crossroads. Each week, Chevrolet presents a true story based on the actual experiences of American clergymen, pastor, priest, or rabbi. The men who give inspiration and guidance to people at the crossroads of life. Tonight, Ringside Padre, starring Stephen McNally in the story of Monsignor Harold S. Engel, now of New York City. I'm Monsignor Harold Engel, director of the Catholic Youth Organization for the Archdiocese of New York. If you read the papers, you're aware of how many deaths have occurred in the prize ring during the last year or so. Now, to argue that it's impossible to do anything about it on the grounds that nothing has been done is no argument at all. All right, come on, let's break it up. Come on. Come on, break it up. That's enough, bro. I'll take you on myself. Hey, out of the spider, you're gonna get hurt. Yeah, I'm a man can talk big behind a white collar. But the collar comes off, or didn't you know? Come on, the CYO gym isn't far off. Come along with me. Hmm? What is this one for the book? I presume you mean the good book. If so, I hope you're right. Now, someone will take this young man to the showers. Lefty, take care of him. <laughs> well, perhaps when he comes through, he'll uh, listen to a few well-chosen words about the right cross. <laughs> this may seem a roundabout way of making friends for the Lord, but seeing stars isn't too far from seeing the light, is it? Yeah, you were just lucky. You're not going to catch me with any sucker punch. Clancy was dumb. Oh! <laughs> Aren't we all dumb, my friend, one way or another? On which corner would you like to go to your knees? Let's gab. A little more action. I recommend the south corner. On your knees from there, you can see the cathedral through the south window. Not a father, can't you take it? Oh, I can take it all right, only, as the Lord said, it's better to give than to receive. Hey, you're gonna, you're gonna trip on that shoelace. That was for a reason, my friend. I'm sure that no matter how smart you think you are, there's usually somebody smarter. I just had to teach you that. Also, in this life, never look down, always up. Could I be next? And who might you be, young man? Johnny Rico. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? In church, perhaps. No, I'm afraid not unless you baptize me. I haven't been to church since. Oh? How long ago was that? Sixteen years. If someone thought enough of you to have you baptized, why haven't they ever brought you to Mass? Oh, well, it was my mother had me baptized, and she died when I was a month old. Oh. Well, it's high time we got to know each other. Are you interested in the church? I'm really interested in boxing, Father. I, well, I've had to fight all my life, and so I thought maybe I could make it pay off. You know, I'll, I'll bet you couldn't do to me what you did to those jokers. <laughs> Got a lot of confidence, huh? Maybe I could even take you. You know I outweigh you. Yeah, but, but I'm fast, Father. I, I shadow box four hours every day. A southpaw, huh? <laughs> Rico. Seems to me I recall that name. Oh, yeah, my... My father. He, he gets in a little trouble now and then. You go to school? Yeah, but I, I'd like to switch to yours if you throw in boxing lessons on the side. Well, I think that could be arranged. When do you want to start? Well... What about now? Oh, good. Pete, see if you can get this young man into some boxing trunks, huh? Sure thing, Father. If he's as smart as he thinks he is, you might have another fighter for the Lord. Let's go. Well, if your brain works as fast as your feet, Johnny, I, I think you got a chance. There's nothing wrong with my brain. That remains to be seen. Hey, is, is that a rabbi or a priest? Where? <laughs> you catch on fast. Could I put a little more steam behind uh, it? You'd have been looking at the cathedral through the south window. It's not bad, Padre. I gotta hand it to you, son.
And not only was he making progress with his hands, his head was working, too. For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will render to everyone according to his conduct. Matthew 16, 27. That's fine, Johnny. Want to know how you're going to rate at the end of the term? I know. At the top of the class, Father, and that goes for boxing, too. That's right. I'm proud of you. Oh, by the way, uh, Jake Ellis telephoned today. He did? Yep. Wanted to know if you'd consider turning pro. What'd you tell him? Oh, I cooled him off. If he approaches you, I want you to do the same. Well, he's the keeper of the lettuce fields, Father. At the rate you're going, in two years you can finish high school. Then maybe a scholarship. Fordham, maybe even Notre Dame. But I want a box, Father. There's plenty of time to think about that. There are lots of things you can do. There's law, medicine. Think it over. Holy terror? Yeah! My friend, you just made me a hundred grand. Oh, wait a minute. He ain't that good. What's the matter with making him look that good? I'm Jake Ellis, remember? It's been done before. Holy terror. Imagine that in print. Johnny's upward surge continued. He won the featherweight championship by a technical knockout. Then he started his climb to the top. Don't fall with a mule kick in both hands. Brother, was that... Oh, father, please, that. just a minute. Not now. Uh, somebody would like to meet you. Father Engel, this is Joe Logan, State Boxing Commission. How do you do? How do, you do? Mighty fine boy you've got in Rico, Father. I, uh, I presume he's turning pro. Oh, well, not if I can prevent it. Johnny's only 16. Well, people like to watch kid fighters. I like to watch them, too. I like to watch them grow up into men with all their faculties. No, Johnny's hanging up his gloves the minute he reaches the top as an amateur. That's a good thing, Father. We want to keep boxing a clean, competitive sport. It's a great sport, Mr. Logan. The manly art of self-defense. Trite but true. Drop in and see me. We can talk it over. I'd like to. I'll look you up one day. Do that. Kid, your troubles are over. Well, Father Engel, th this is my dad. Mr. Rico? Hi, Father. I guess you know Jake Ellis, huh? We've talked on the telephone. Jake's the kid's new manager. New manager? Yeah. Johnny's going to turn pro. You can't mean this, Mr. Rico. Why, Johnny's too, too young, too inexperienced. There's his future at college. Did Jack Dempsey go to college? Or Fritz Simmons or old John L? Father, a million bucks sits right here. The holy terror, no less. There are other things more important. Is it better for Johnny to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Please, Padre, don't give me no God stuff. Johnny's underage. I'm his father. He does like I say. Besides, I already signed the contract. Do you mean he's through as an amateur? That he can't go to Chicago? Who said anything about his not going to Chicago? If he wins the amateur title, so much the better. The publicity will double the gate for us, eh, kid? <laughs> and what about you, Johnny? How do you feel about all this? What can I say? He's my dad. In other words, ready or not, you want to turn professional. Look, I've been ready for a long time, Father. That's your opinion, son, not mine. I want you to know I violently protest this move. But I can go to the top. And what lies on the other end? Will, will you let me worry about that? Look, Father, I, I, I appreciate everything you've done for me, but, but well, as Mr. Ellis says, it looks like I'm a holy terror. Uh, the terror. <laughs> A hundred grand. The Holy Terror sells tickets, and I'm giving them to you for three fights, ain't I? Where would I be if he loses them? <laughs> what gives you the idea he's gonna lose even one? Don't make me laugh. You think I built that kid up just to let him lose? He'll win them all. 
And then you and I'll split the melon. Don't tell me that boy's in on a fix. I thought you were smart. Or are you just acting dumb? Listen, when that kid crosses himself, he means it. But it takes two to make a fight, don't it? Yeah? And all the diving in the world ain't done off the end of a springboard. After three, the melon. Alice, you've got a deal. Providing I'm in on the melon. Okay, okay. Just wait till it gets ripe. Who can quarrel with success? Johnny had it with all the trimmings. Hiya, Father Angle. Oh, hello, Johnny. How are things in the heart factory, Father? All on key? Oh, we're getting along all right. Nice of you to come see us. Meet Zelda Lamar, my girl Sunday. Oh, and uh, Friday and Saturday, too. <laughs> How do you do, Miss Lamar? Well, at the moment, I'm only doing Johnny. Hey, you know, Father, I never should have wasted all that time as an amateur. You read the papers? Eighteen in a row. I never had it so good. You can say that again. Ah. Come on, boys. Back to work. We take on St. Benedict's Wednesday night. Pete, uh, would you mind showing Miss Lamar around the place? I want to speak to Johnny. Sure thing, Father. Ever been in a gym before, Miss Lamar? No, but anything masculine, I adore. <laughs> the good old south window. Look down in the street, Father. See that shiny roadster? It's mine. But I never would own it if I'd stuck around here. I'm sorry, I still only see the cathedral. You see this suit, Father? Now, you got to admit, it's better than yours. I, uh... I'm going to send you a couple of seats to my fight with Smiley Jackson. I hope you can make it. I'll be glad to, Johnny. But didn't you beat Smiley Jackson? It's a rematch. I'm a cinch to beat him again. And this time, I'm going to have my whole bankroll riding on myself. Well, I wish you luck. It takes a lot more than luck to win fights, Father. Yeah. That's a thought that's been running around in my mind, too. What? It's all set, Johnny. I'll tell you what round to take him in. In the sixth. Now you're telling me what round to win in. What's the matter with that? It's paid off, hasn't it? You're through, Jake. I'm going to manage the fight for Johnny tonight. And all the rest of his fights from now on. You're dumping me, is that it? I don't need you no more. You don't need me no more. Now, ain't that just dandy? How do you think this kid's won all these fights? With his two fists, what else? And you think I had nothing to do with it, huh? Well, I can train him just as good like you. Okay, okay. If that's the way you want to play, you're a couple of saps. Smiley Jackson will win it in the sixth. And melons are in season. What's that supposed to mean? It means you won't even answer the bell for round number seven. Now I've heard everything. I just hope you can hear the count of ten. Wait a minute. I suppose you mean Johnny's fights have been all set up, huh? What do you think? This kid never should have turned pro. At best, he's just a fair amateur. Ah, okay, okay. I hope you both enjoy your streetcar ride. It's gonna be all downhill. And you'll have nobody at the brakes. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm gonna murder that Smiley Jackson. Sure, Johnny, sure. But Jake Ellis knew whereof he spoke. Johnny's streetcar had begun its downward ride. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. As Ellis had predicted, it ended in round number six. And I doubt if Johnny heard the count. He's lost ten in a row, the hard way. He's broke. I don't know what's going to happen to him. It's neither your fault nor mine, Father. The kid has lost his stuff. I question whether he ever had enough for the professional ring. For his own good, please. Bar him from future fights. His dad has got a license to manage him. If he tells a boy to fight, he's got to fight. Even if it kills him? Can't you see that the state's obsolete boxing laws are, are murdering a 16-year-old boy? They should be at least 18 before they enter the professional ring. I don't write the laws, Father. You got him started. 
You taught him boxing. We teach hundreds of boys boxing just to keep them off the streets. But we can't protect them from the Jake Ellis's who are trying to exploit them no matter what the consequences. I hear he's fighting tonight in Albany. Unless the commission stops it, and it should. We've changed other laws in this country. Why not the one that allows boys to be slaughtered in the prize ring? You have something, Father, but I'm afraid I can't get a law through the state capitol in time to stop that fight tonight. No, I suppose not. Go on, Johnny Rico. Needless to say, he lost in Albany after taking a terrible beating. And a dozen beatings later, it happened. This kid never should have turned pro. At best, he's just a fair amateur. Uh, okay, okay. I hope you both enjoy your streetcar ride. Care of me or else. Never could trust him. All right, it's a deal. But for a gun, you have to sign the book. Okay. And you know I'm taking a chance. Mr. Uh, Ellis. Don't turn on the lights, Dad. Ever since that last fight in Trenton, I don't know, bright lights seem to kill me. I know, Johnny, I'm Put sorry. Put the gun on the dresser, Dad. How do you know I got a gun? The pawnbroker phoned. He was worried after he gave you the gun. After that last fight, we're known in this town. Why did you sign the name Jake Ellis? Because I'm going to kill him, that's why. For what? Not being on the streetcar to put on the brakes? Who kicked him off? We did, Dad. He's a crook. they all crooks. Is that going to change anything by killing him? Is that going to make me an amateur again? What, do you think you could shake him down for some dough? Is that it? We need it, don't we? We'll never get it from Jake Ellis. But I know where to get it. Go on, get washed up. We'll have money by morning. Your head's still aching, Johnny. Feels like a trip hammer inside my skull. Go on, get ready for bed. Leave the gun on the dresser. Can't you call in the morning? Mm, I could. But I think you want to hear what I have to say now, knowing you as I do. Knowing me? Uh, who is this speaking? Don't know whether you remember me, Father. Bob Casey. Used to coach the boxing team over at St. Vincent's. Oh, of course I remember you, Bob. Best coach we ever had. Don't tell me you're in trouble. No. We got your boy, Johnny Rico, and he's in plenty of trouble. Johnny Rico? What's he done? Held up a gas station about an hour ago. Got him dead to rights. Hit the attendant over the head with a tire wrench. Do everything you can, won't you, Bob? Where is he? I'll be right over. You tell him that. No. I'm making this call on my own, Father. But one thing I'm sure of. Johnny doesn't want to see you. He made that quite plain. Oh, I see. Well, I'll be right over anyway. 
God bless you for calling. He carried on something awful when I told him I'd call you. All right, Father. Hello, Johnny. Go away. Don't worry, we'll see it through. I don't want to see you. Sit up and look the father in the face when you talk to him, Johnny. Do you hear me, Johnny? Sit don't up. Don't force him, Bob. Remember the day I told you we could make both Marys proud of you? We still can, Johnny. It's never too late to start all over again. I told you to go away. But can't you see, out of this, we can help others. Even from evil, good can arise. Come on, we'll get you out of here. This is none of your business! Get out! Johnny, please. Padre, it's all my fault. I should have been in jail, not Johnny. No, no Mr. Rico, we'll, we'll, we'll get the boy straightened out. You'll get me straightened out. You'll get me straightened out. Look at me! Look at me! Padre, like that. I'm to blame. Let him talk, Mr. Rico. Sure, you didn't want me to turn pro. If you knew it was so wrong for me, why didn't you find some way to stop me? Why, you disrespectful little... No, Bob. Johnny's right. I put up a poor fight in his behalf. I didn't even get hurt. He took all the beatings. But I promise you, Johnny, from this minute on, I'll be in your corner. And I'll come out swinging. Nothing will stop me, unless God so wills. Oh, Father. There it is, son. Blessed Mary, Mother of God, help me to help this boy, all other boys like him. Pray for us, dear Blessed Virgin. We need your help. We need it badly. Has everyone had time to study the photographs? They were taken only a year ago, before Johnny Rico turned professional. He was a fine-looking boy. Now, we all agree that there's nothing wrong with boxing that legislation can't cure. It's a great sport, always has been. But something must be done about existing laws. Laws which allow a boy to fight as a professional at 16. Now, Johnny Rico is with us today because he's anxious to help other boys like him. And so that you can see with your own eyes what happens to a lad who enters the professional ring before he's ready. Johnny, will you come in, please? Mm -hmm. This is Johnny Rico, gentlemen. Age 17. In 1937, the law was changed in New York State, raising the minimum age from 16 to 18, thus breaking the back of the kid's market for the Jake Ellis's of the fight game, and assuring young fighters a protection against the danger of their own immaturity. Today, we might look at the ring again. Do we need a boxing czar in every state? Has our boxing legislation kept pace with the times? I, I merely pose these questions. Oh, and uh, if you're interested in what became of Johnny Rico, plastic surgery did its wonderful work. And today you may find him not far from Miami, Florida, being the sort of man his mother could have wanted him to be. Oh, Johnny. Oh, hi, Father. Well, how's the baby? Oh, he's going to be a real champ, Father. What did you say? Oh, well, not for a time. A long time. <laughs> say about 18 years. Stories for Crossroads are selected by our Board of Advisors, Captain Maurice M. Witherspoon, Father George B. Ford, and Dr. William F. Rosenblum. <laughs>